okay boys and girls we have a new toy here and you can actually see me outfitting the aircraft here i finally earned my vampire now let me use the term earned loosely i've cheated a little bit and bought the tokens for the last stage just didn't want to mess with it anymore tired of waiting for this thing and i thought you guys would like to see a new aircraft all right a little bit of the history on this aircraft is that it began development in 1941 uh, with Mr. Whittle's jet, and you can see some of the interesting facts. is a twin-boomed straight-wing fighter, and it began as just an experimental aircraft to see what they could do with it, the De Havilland Company in particular, and it went relatively well, where a lot of other projects were not going so well. This one was relatively viceless. So much so that with the Meteor in production, six months later, this uh, aircraft was being produced in numbers. And it worked so well that they did not cut it back despite all sorts of other aircraft programs being all but given up at this time. So it gives you a good idea of what the aircraft is, how important it was, and it was retired. Uh, it was actually went into full production uh, in late April 1944 began to be introduced by the end of the war uh, I think there were about 12 in operation more were quickly coming it was for its time surprisingly a very viceless aircraft it had a few problems with low speed turns but uh, its stalls were relatively easy to overcome with a little bit of elevator control when the aircraft was designed, it was always uh, envisioned that it would be a mere uh, well, well, development aircraft, but they made provisions to carry 20 millimeter guns and so forth and so on. This is a, one of the rare occasions where an experimental aircraft goes right. They were so pleased with it that they decided that they would just continue. And this aircraft continued into with the RAF and was the export success on top of that into 1956 when it was retired. Now, that's not a knock on the aircraft. It's just that the fact that this aircraft was... Um, the state of aviation at the time was advancing so quickly that no aircraft really lasted all that long. So, you know, the vaunted F-86, which was a fantastic aircraft, was essentially being, re you know, relegated to second-line service by 1956. There were better aircraft already on the way. You know, so it, it's not so much that the design of the aircraft was bad as the fact that just got superseded by better technology as we grew in our understanding of aerodynamics and aero engineering. So there we go with the aircraft. What it means in the game. This is a firepower of 460 and 2,500 feet. Uh, and I'm just rounding up to the nearest numbers. The altitude on it is 5250. And it has a, as it comes out of the box, a 10.3. By the time you put your lightweight airframe and a lightweight engine into it, you're down, uh, even at uh, level two, you're looking at a 10 second turn time. Now, this is a one point pilot at the point that we're showing this aircraft. So, you know, that's what I had available. I don't have an excess of uh, souped up British pilots right now. Well, I don't have an excess of souped-up pilots, period, and they're all assigned to aircraft. So you're going to see this, and I promise you, if you have a better pilot, you're going to get better results. However, I was very pleased with the aircraft. It will outturn most aircraft in the uh, mid-range. Most of them are coming in, you know, 10.4, 10.2. 10.3, there's a few out there that are coming in sub 9. But at tier 9, or tier 8, I should say, this is a very effective aircraft. It should not be misjudged at all. And the fact that it can fly at 8,000 feet just fine makes it 
far more versatile than one would think. <coughs> so, um, I ended up being fairly pleased with the aircraft, happy to introduce it to you, wanted to get a video out today. I did have something new to show you, so by God, we're going to show it. I do have a um, 211 uh, Soviet Russian aircraft uh, that I'm working on right now. I just haven't got a good uh, video on it yet, so, that, so that's coming as well. You'll see that in the next few days as I uh, knuckle under and start working, uh, working the aircraft a little harder. It is a gorgeous aircraft, and one of the things I should point out is the twin boom configuration. And this is a prescient move because there were a number of aircraft that had a real problem with the uh, exhaust from the jet engines. And at least uh, one of the Soviet aircraft and some of the pod designs, they had to... Um, introduce heavy stainless steel paneling underneath the uh, rear of the aircraft to keep it from melting the structure. <laughs> yes, jet exhausts get hot enough to melt aluminum. Thank you very much. And you would have thought that would have been something that everybody would have figured out, but there are a number of designs out there that you'll see. Uh, and you'll notice that in the German aircraft designs, they had them tilted down considerably more, and that was to avoid that problem. All right, and again, you can see very quickly that the um, aircraft has no problem climbing, uh, maneuvering well. Guns are more than sufficient to tier eight. And the maneuverability is just simply outstanding. You'll notice no real degradation of performance until you get to 7,000 feet. And then you get too much higher, you'll start seeing reduced engine speeds. Now, this is not a very fast aircraft, yeah, about 286, which even at Tier 8 isn't all that fast. But if uh, you get somebody gets a little too ambitious and gets close to you, well, they're kind of toast. Even with the uh, heavy fighters, uh, beware, you're not going to shake this aircraft if you get too close. And this uh, 109Z found that out very quickly. Now, again, this is the one-point pilot. I've got a so-so sight on it, you know. Uh, you'll get much better performance out of this aircraft than I'm getting uh, with better pilots and... When you specialize it, you should see a nice effect with it. Now, this is a voiceover, and the reason was that I was flying with my uh, partner in crime, Barfly. And uh, we got to talking about everything but uh, performance of aircraft and... Uh, other inappropriate subjects for a video so excuse me but the sound's gone and we'll just have to live with the voiceover now i love the nimbleness of this aircraft no it's not going to hang with a zero But for taking out even ground attack aircraft, doesn't do bad at all. Survivability on this aircraft is right around 350 points, and that's going to go up and down according to what you do with the airframe mods and wing mods and engine mods as normal. Right now, this one's running about three, 342, I believe. Which means the rammers out there will go after you with a vengeance given a choice.
And F-190D snuck up behind me while I was concentrating on that bomber and took me out, the foul son of a gun. And at this point of the uh, the flight, I was very happy with the aircraft. Obviously, you know, you don't want to pay attention to your, your map out there. You get exactly what you deserve, and I did. The only one to blame on that one is me. The F-190D is a fine aircraft as a uh, multi-op, but it is not a turn and burn, and I could have eaten his lunch. And I'm chasing after this aircraft at high altitude, and he's a heavy fighter, and we're not having a whole lot of success. Okay, we'll just switch targets. This thing is happy as at mid-altitude. All right, so I took my own advice. By the way, that was not a spectacular hit. That was the fact that we actually captured the cap point and the aircraft blew up. And we have Mr. George Patton there. Yeah. And I'm flying against two aircraft here. <clears throat> and this is what's called a furball and so far I'm winning it Another heavy fighter up here. Keep waiting for this guy to make a mistake. And that's the end of this segment of the flight. So I lined up another one for you on this. Really wasn't a bad first flight. Like I said, I haven't got a great pilot in this. Yeah, you put a five or seven point pilot in this, you're going to see commensurate results. And my opinion of it is that it's an aircraft that really deserves a pilot of that class. This is a nice plane to have at tier eight. Now, don't get me wrong, you introduce this thing and you get up-tiered with this in a Tier 9, and it's not going to be nearly as much fun. Mainly, it's just too slow. And the altitude limitations of Tier 9 would eat you up pretty quick. There are a lot of aircraft that are very fast, very high-flying, and this is not the aircraft to bring to that fight. So, as a vernacular goes, this is not an aircraft that's going to age well when it up-tiered. 
And when you come in and it's, you know, mixed uh, eights and sevens, you're going to do very well indeed. All right, first victim. Now we decided early on, my uh, wingman and I, that capturing the airfield in this particular map is pretty crucial. I spent way too much time with the, the barracks uh, installations with not happy results. And, well, all that just, you know, you end up with them controlling the airfield and too many aircraft getting sucked into a dominance point where they have the uh, uh, air defense fighters too and the, uh, a lot of people like to take advantage, including myself, of the air defense fighters to cloud the picture and then sneaking up and killing anybody that tries to uh, work with that. So in this particular map of this particular setup where you have the uh, uh, two tack bases to the west and the air base in between, uh, you better grab the airfield pretty quickly and make a decisive um, play for it. Now I'm going around and around with a zero here. And you can tell this is an air defense because sh he should be eating my lunch. And he's not. Now this is a great place to be in because obviously I'm just one of many targets and I'm taking full advantage of the air defense fighters to uh, not let people see what I'm doing until it's too late. And the uh, 420 millimeter cannons are more than sufficient to deal with most stuff. Come back around. Get making use of a good maneuverability with this. Most of the multi-ops are going to be in pretty poor condition with the vampire on its tail. And a P-47 is no exception. It's given up three and a half seconds of uh, turn time to this aircraft. And, yeah. Now, I did the smart thing here and chose the second aircraft. Yeah. 
And that's it. Did pretty well on this. Really not going to complain a whole lot about the performance of the aircraft. So the major takes on this aircraft are the upside is uh, more than decent turning circle. Certainly not a turn and burn, but it can start getting into the sub 10 seconds with the uh, right equipment and a good pilot, which beats most things out there, but a true turn and burn. The speed's a little slow. The altitude's not everything that you could want. But overall, a very worthy plane, worthy of your time, worthy of your attention. Uh, it's currently the, uh, you see I've just got the second point, so I went, went ahead and got Marksman 1 on this. Um, not at all a bad aircraft. It was a lot of fun to fly. I have to admit I have a prediction for the uh, uh, medium fighters. Favorite aircraft of all is the 1101. <coughs> but I very much look forward to the day that they decide to end the power creep and put uh, four M39 cannons on the F-86. Hint, hint. Uh, other than that, this is a great aircraft. Um, spent a lot of time getting all the stuff knocked out for it. Um, but at the end of it, I'm actually glad that I did it. Uh, I can't say that about all the aircraft. Uh, the, you know, I cannot stand the American bombers the way they are right now. They're a waste of time and a waste of effort, and I'm, you know, have a B-32 and thoroughly dislike it. Um, I hope that they uh, will revisit the way that those aircraft are currently deployed. Or configured, I should say, in the game to make them a little more competitive. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you again.